Hello, I'm Mike. And I'm Lisa, and it's really wonderful to spend Good Friday together with you. And today's the day that we remember what Jesus did for us. Mm. I think we get that he loves us and cares for us and really wants relationship with us. Yeah. But sometimes we lose sight of what he had to do in order to make that relationship really possible. Yeah, it's really true. So let's take a listen to Alyssa now and find out more about this story. Today, our story is from the book of Luke. It's a story about three crosses, two criminals, and the death of the Son of God. When Jesus was 33 years old, he was killed. And that seemed like it was the end of the story. But it was all part of a plan. This plan had started all the way back in the Garden of Eden at the beginning of the Bible. God wanted a close relationship with us, but Adam and Eve sinned, and that separated us from God. But at that moment, God set in motion a plan to rescue us from our sin, and that plan was Jesus. It started by God choosing Abram and promising him that his family would become a great nation and that all nations will be blessed through them. His family became the nation of Israel, the nation Jesus would eventually be born into. God loved his people Israel and wanted them to live in the best way possible. So he gave them rules to follow and a special land to live in. But the people of Israel were not able to keep the rules and kept making bad choices. So God sent his own son, Jesus, to rescue them and show them how to live. Jesus showed us that the purpose for the rules was to help us to love God and love others above all else. This was a radical new teaching, and this made the teachers of the law angry because they thought that following the rules was more important than anything else. So they came up with a plan to capture Jesus and kill him. And eventually, they did. And that leads to today's story from Luke 23, verses 26 to 56. Hey everyone, it's Alyssa. How's it going? So do you know what happened the other day? My friends that I haven't seen in such a long time were hosting a party, but it was all the way across town, almost an hour drive. Now, there was no way that I could get there on the bus or on the train, but I really, really wanted to go. So my dad heard about this and offered to give me a drive all the way across town, wait there during the party, and then drive me all the way back home. Now, I knew that this was such a big deal for him because there was a really big Raptors game on that he would miss. Plus, he would miss his whole night waiting for me. He sacrificed all of that so that I could see my friends and have a good time. Today is an important day to remember an amazing thing that Jesus did for us. Jesus lived, loved, and served. He performed miracles. He helped people. And he did one really big thing to show his great love for everyone. He suffered and died so that we wouldn't have to be afraid of death. And that's today's big idea. Jesus suffered for us. So here's the story. The religious leaders of Jesus' time wanted to trap and arrest him, but they couldn't find a good time to do it. So they paid one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, to help them. Jesus had been betrayed by one of his closest friends, Judas. He was arrested and then he was whipped and hurt and he bled. It was really painful and really sad. Remember, Jesus is God, so he could have called on angels to come and rescue him, but he knew that he had to carry on. He knew that he had a job to do in showing the world how much God loves us. So here's what happened next. The soldiers led Jesus to the hill where he would be put on the cross to die. They forced Jesus to carry his own cross, but at a certain point, Jesus just couldn't do it anymore. He was in so much pain. He had been beaten, he was tired, he was bleeding, and the cross was so heavy. So they pulled a man from the crowd, a man named Simon from Cyrene, and told him to carry the cross for Jesus. A whole bunch of people followed Jesus and Simon to the place where Jesus would be put on the cross. A bunch of women were following and weeping and crying because it was so sad, but even in his pain, Jesus turned around and comforted them. They eventually got to the place where Jesus would be put on the cross. That place was called the skull. There were two other men that were also going to be killed. They were criminals. They had broken the law, 
But Jesus hadn't done anything wrong. They were all put on crosses, one on Jesus' left and one on his right. Let's read what happens next. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Do you see that? Even as he was suffering and in so much pain, Jesus was asking God to forgive the people that were about to kill him. The soldiers divided up his clothes by casting lots. Basically, they were playing a game and Jesus' clothes were the prize. The people stood there watching. The rulers even made fun of Jesus. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and poked fun at him. They offered him wine vinegar. They said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. This was such a horrible experience. Jesus was hanging on the cross with nails in his hands and feet. And these people were making fun of him. He was suffering in every possible way. Let's keep reading. One of the criminals hanging there made fun of Jesus. He said, aren't you the Christ? Save yourself, save us. But the other criminals scolded him. Don't you have any respect for God, he said? Remember, you are under the same sentence of death. We are being punished fairly. We are getting just what our actions call for. But this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, what I'm about to tell you is true. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Okay, do you see what just happened? One of the criminals was making fun of Jesus and the other one stopped him because he knew that Jesus was the son of God. He knew that Jesus was Lord. And then Jesus told that man that he would be with Jesus in heaven. That's awesome. And so a few hours later, in the middle of the day, everything got really dark and darkness covered the place until about three o'clock in the afternoon. Then the Bible tells us that the temple curtain was torn in two. Now let's pause here for a second because this is a really important important symbol. The temple curtain being torn in two represented the barrier between God and people being torn down. The barrier of sin no longer separated God from people. Because Jesus suffered for us, there is no longer a barrier for us to have a relationship with God. Let's read what happens next. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my very life. After he said this, he took his last breath. The Roman commander saw what had happened. He praised God and said Jesus was surely a man who did what was right. The people had gathered to watch that sight. When they saw what happened, they beat their chests and went away. But all those who knew Jesus stood not very far away watching those things. They included the women who had followed him from Galilee. Then a man named Joseph asked to take Jesus' body and place it in a tomb, and so he did. Here we can clearly see that Jesus suffered for us. He suffered for you, for me, for all people. He suffered so that we don't have to suffer for our sins or be afraid of death. He suffered because he loves us so much. This is a really tough story. Jesus suffered, he was in pain, he died. There is a lot of darkness, but it doesn't stay that way. Jesus doesn't stay dead, but we'll get to that next time. This is Alyssa and I will see you later. Whoa, no matter how many times I hear that story, it still blows my mind that Jesus would love us that much to suffer and die for us. I know, and it's something I get in my head, but when I actually focus on Jesus and imagine that and feel it in my heart, the suffering that he went through for the people who were there, but also for everyone who's gonna come after, including me, yeah. that just makes me so thankful that he went through that for us. Yeah, and it's important for us to remember what Alyssa also said, that even though it was hard to hear how Jesus had to suffer for us, we do know one thing, he doesn't stay dead. And thank goodness for that. Yeah. We're gonna get to that next time, but for now, let's get into our small groups and talk about what this looks like for our own lives.